and uh, we had a sawdust floor, and and uh, uh, this uh, we had uh, I think it was two by sixes on the platform, and one of them kind of bounced, and he fell, and uh, with Archie Anderson, and when he fell, uh, he felt like he had broken his hip and his leg. He was crying in agony. He was in pain, and he could not get up. And uh, we went down, and simple as we were, believing God, yes. a 14-year-old boy, just saved two years, uh, hardly knew too much about the scriptures. All I knew was I loved Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. I love Christ. Yes. Did you know it really takes you loving Jesus Christ to get you started toward your salvation? Yes. You can't hardly do anything without a passionate, fervent love for Jesus Christ. A love that outshines any love you have on this earth for anybody or anything because Christ must be first. And I, uh, we went down and prayed and Sister Louise Davenport, uh, Sister Combs was there and that Brother Bob Cornelius was there and some of the early people and we laid hands on Brother Anderson in a few moments I said, Brother Anderson, you feel like getting back on the platform and you can testify about the saving, healing, grace of God? He said, I believe it can. I said, all right, believe. Stand on your feet. And he stood up and he first kind of shook and, and he couldn't stand and we held him. And we kept praying and believing God. And he said, I'm hurting, I'm hurting, I'm not sure. I think the bones broke. I said, no, believe it isn't. Believe yes. that God yes. is going to give yes. you a miracle yes. right now. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. In a few moments, he began to straighten up. And the first thing you know, he took a leap and leaped up and yes. came down on that leg. Yes. And we led him on the platform, yes. praising yes. the name of yes. Jesus Christ. Yes. I'm going to ask you a question on Sunday because very, it's very emphatic in my mind as the Holy Spirit is dealing with me. And I'm just following the Spirit right here. Uh, I, I may get into a verse of Scripture. I really didn't intend to get in welcome some people right now, but, but I'm going to follow what I feel right now. I'm going to follow what I feel right now because how many believe the church ought to worship God in spirit and in truth? I say, how many believe ought to come back to where the church worships God without a program, without ritualism, without form, without a ceremony, but just be led by the Holy Spirit. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, what are they? Who are they? The sons of God. The sons of God. So as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. And we worship God. Man has ritualized the church. He's conformed the church. He's reformed the church. And now he's deformed the church. And we need to bring the church out and let it be affected, infected, and disinfected by the power of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. It's time for the church to have revival. It's time for people to get the Holy Ghost. It's time for the remnant to rejoice because we're going back to Zion. We're marching uh, on our way to Zion. We're going back to New Jerusalem. We're going back to a new heaven and a new earth. Praise the name of the Lord. We're leaving the old. We're leaving the yesterday. We're leaving the pain and struggle of the church of yesterday. The church is giving birth. And a woman does not stay in travail. A woman is only in travail as long as that child is still partially in her body. Yeah. But when that child is separated and the cord is cut and the mother beholds her child, there is a rejoicing yeah. in the house. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. Did you get what I said? Yeah. Did you get what I said? Yeah. Yeah, the Lord showed me in my sickness in the hospital, uh, lying there coming from my fever, a few days ago, God showed me, and I felt very lonely. You know, you get, you get very lonely in a hospital. You know, you wonder where your friends are. You wonder where people are that you loved and cared for. Down through the years, you wonder uh, if you have any left. You wonder if, if the friends are gone and they're not there. Uh, a hospital is a very lonely place. That's why I urge all of you, don't let anybody be in the hospital without you making an effort to go. Yeah. Or you send them a card. Yeah. Or get some flowers. Yeah. Or call them. Because a hospital is a cold, lonely place. And, and uh, when I was in that place, the Holy Spirit showed me. I'm going to go to it now. I'll pick my Bible up here in a moment. But the, and, I, and, and is it all right for me to follow the Spirit? Yeah. Right here? Yeah. And to be led of the Lord? Yeah. And 
praise the name of the Lord. And I, I was in the room and, and uh, the fever broke and I felt the presence of Christ. And uh, uh, the Lord said to me, I'm going to give you a revelation on the 8th chapter uh, of Revelation. I said, give me a revelation on the 8th chapter of Revelation. And the Lord said, yes, I'm going to give you that. If you have your Bibles, I want you to read this with me because it's very important. Uh, th this is a very important scripture. Uh, I taught this another way for 60 years of Bible teaching. I taught this. I have studied this Bible for 64 years. I still have the original Bible my father bought me at Pelosi Drugstore 64 years ago, and I first began to read the Bible, and I knew nothing about the Bible. And I taught this another way, and I ask you to consider it. I don't ask you to dogmatically accept it, because I know that some of you were taught the way I was taught, and you believe what I believe because I taught some of you, and I know others have taught you. <laughs> but um, I, I, want, I want to look at Revelation uh, 8, and the Lord opened this up to me. I'm going to base my, more or less my, my thoughts to you from this. Uh, the Bible said in Revelation 8 and 1, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Now, now hold that scripture and we'll keep it on the screen. And I was taught, and I taught it this way for 60 years, that this was a time period of the future that we had not yet arrived there, that we were in the process of the six seals in Revelation 6, and they had been opened with a prophetic year of 1914. That was the teaching I received, that the last seal, and you may not have received that, but I received that from my early teachers, that the, the, the Bible in the sixth chapter of Revelation, showing the horses, the red horse, the, the, uh, the uh, white horse, then the red horse, then the black horse, then the pale horse, that these were prophetic time periods in the sixth chapter in which the church evolved from the leadership of Christ, the white horse, reign of the church, evolved through the dark ages of martyrdom, the red, and the darkness of apostate teaching of the black horse, and then the pale horse with hell following was the confirmation of the church being in death and hell in the time of, of, uh, of, of the feudalism and serfdom of Europe and the Dark Age Church. And then I was taught that the church evolved from that into the seeing of the souls under the altar. This is all in the sixth chapter. Uh, and, and the souls were the overcomers of the church that moved from the early days of Paul, James, John, the apostles in Christ, and they were under Christ, the altar. And uh, is that the way some of you got it? Is that the way some of you received it? Uh, then then they, they, they cried out, and they cried out in the days of Martin Luther, the Protestant reformer, who started the Reformation in the 15th century, that just shall live by faith, and started the Protestant Reformation. And that fifth seal was open when Martin Luther cried out and said the just shall live by faith. And then God showed John in prophecy, in revelation, that white robes or angelic bodies were given them and they were told to rest a little season. And that little season was and is to the time period we're living in, in which the overcomers of the church, the souls under the altar, are resting there and awaiting, awaiting the coming of Christ. And then we moved into the seventh, uh, the latter part of the sixth chapter, and my teachers concluded that the last part of Revelation 6 was when that great earthquake took place in 1914, when Pentecostal churches compromised and formed organizations and gave the churches names and accepted credentials as ministers, and they showed me in the scriptures where parabolically, symbolically, stars in the Bible represented ministers. And the sun represented the New Testament of Christ. And the moon, which is a lesser light, represented the law of Moses. And they showed me where in prophecy, the book of Revelation showed 
that the stars fell from heaven. There was a great earthquake. And they said that was 1914 prophetically. And Israel was a tree that was shaken of